Thank you for listening to Gateway City Church Online today. We hope this message will be a blessing to you and draw you closer to God. Now let's go into the service for today's message. Now, Kathy and I are, we're going to get into the message and we're going to kind of turn our attention here to the subject of relationships. And uh, this is what we've been focusing on for the last few weeks. And, you know, Kathy and I have been talking about why we're doing this series to begin with. The reason that we're talking to you and taking time to address the issue of relationships is because relationships are vital in every person's life. Relationships are the source sometimes of our greatest pain. And so anything we can do as, you know, as teachers and leaders and pastors to to minister to the pain that's in people's lives, that's that's what we want to do. Relationships are a place where people are hurting. And relationships are also a place of incredible potential. Can you say that word with me? Potential. I don't know if you're happy where you are in life. I'm not sure if, if, you're, if you're settled on the fact that this is about as good as it gets and it's not really going to be any better. But we want to talk to you about relationships because we are passionate and on fire with one truth, that your life can be better, that you can have an abundant life, and that in every area that really matters in your life, God Almighty can make an incredible difference. And by focusing on the area of relationships uh, and, and bringing God's word to you, we're not trying to be cute. We're not trying to be current. We're not trying to be relevant. We're trying to get people into breakthrough. We're trying to get people into a better place in life. Can I have an amen here? This is not a game for us. Kathy and I are not, we're not here, you know, on these white chairs because it's cute. We, we are believing That something is going to happen in your life and in your relationship. If you're married in your marriage, if you're a father in your relationship with you, we're believing that something incredible is going to happen and that as we plant the word of God into you, it's going to make a huge difference. Right, honey? What are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling that when we bring Jesus into our relationships, that just makes everything better. Right. You know, there is things that we've learned growing up in our homes Some people think that to have a relationship means that you yell at each other because that's the way they grew up. They thought that that's the way that you're supposed to communicate with each other. Some people, maybe in your home, they threw things at each other. You know, it was just an atmosphere of anger. But how many of you know when we come into God's kingdom, he teaches us a new way to relate to each other. He teaches us how to love each right. other in our relationships. I know that the house that I grew up in, it was a pretty good house. It was, my parents brought us up Catholic, but you know, there was 12 kids. So sometimes we were mean to each other mm-hmm. and sometimes we called each other names. And so I thought that that's kind of how you talk to people. Mm-hmm. And so when we got married, I, you know, I thought that maybe The way to talk to him was how I talked to my brother. And, you know, idiot didn't go over too well. Or, you know, speaking to you in ways that weren't godly, that didn't work. And so it was like, uh uh-oh. You did a great job. And, of course, I was only, I was all of 22 years old, so I had so much experience and so much wisdom to bring into this relationship. But God taught me a new way. Right. And he taught me things that I couldn't do on my own. And that's the awesome thing about having the Holy Spirit and Jesus in our lives is that we're not doing it on our own. Right. And how many times do we do things, we'll go maybe weeks and try to figure out a problem, a relational problem, something that we're obsessing over, um, something that we bring to breakfast with us, we bring it to lunch, we bring it to dinner. And it's like, we're trying to do it in our own strength and that doesn't work. No. And maybe some, something we've cried about and we've just agonized over it and we try to do it our, in our own strength, that doesn't work. We have to call on the name of the Lord and we have to bring God into our relationship. So that's what we want to do this morning. Yeah. We just want to pray. We want to put our hands on our hearts and, and ask God just to come in. So Lord, we just Thank call you, on you right yes, now. Yes, we Lord. ask you to come into this come, room, into this place. Come, Lord. Lord, we just leave all of the junk 
and all of the mistakes and everything that we've tried to do in our own strength behind. And Lord, we're right here in your presence. We're in this beautiful place. And Lord, we just thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit just coming in to our minds and into yes, our hearts Come, right Lord. now. Yes, Lord. Lord, we arrest right now that discouragement and even that hopelessness that can enter into a marriage or a friendship or a ministry team or any kind of relationship, Lord, that brings such a heaviness, the anger that can come in, the unforgiveness that can come in. Lord Jesus, you're teaching us a new way of doing relationships. It's the law of love. It's about forgiveness. You came, Lord, and you taught us how to leave our gift at the altar and how to make a relationship right and how to fix it. And Lord, it's not always easy. It's not easy being married. It's not easy sharing a team or working together in the workplace. Sometimes it's very hard when people are difficult and they're from different backgrounds and, and they don't think like we think. But Lord, we are believing you for breakthroughs in our relationship. Father, I'm declaring a season at Gateway of relationship breakthroughs, Lord, that we will be a discipling church that is rightly connected, Lord, in love and in grace and in peace. We won't be a, a, a place where people talk bad about each other. We won't, I break that now in Jesus' name. Lord, we won't be a place where there's unforgiveness and hurt and struggle and, and silence when it comes to connection. Lord, we pray that you will enrich, Lord, every relationship, every marriage, Lord. And I pray, Lord, especially for the ones that are hurting today. Lord, I'm just going to take time to pray over pain right now. I'm going to ask you to go to hurting relationships, Lord. Broken relationships, Lord. Marriages where there's just the love is gone. Father-son or father-daughter relationships where the... The life just isn't there. The spark isn't there. Lord, I'm asking you for breakthrough. I'm asking you, Lord, to bring healing, Lord, to our relationships. We are contending, Lord. And we come against the assignments of the enemy in our marriages. We come against the assignments of the enemy against our teams and our friendships and our relationships. We break his power in Jesus' name. Everyone say, in Jesus' name. Come on, say it again, in Jesus' name. Lord, we just thank you for a mighty work in our relationships that we will never go back to what it was, Lord. We will step into a new place in our homes and our families and in this church. As we sow the word in, Lord, let it bring forth a mighty harvest in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Would you just lift your hands to the Lord right now? Don't even be ashamed. Don't even be, don't even be sad. Don't even be shy right now. Lord, we thank you for the, there's the mighty power of the Holy Spirit just coming into our experience right now. Lord, we thank you for intersecting with us, heaven and earth right now, in our relationships, Lord. Every marriage, Lord. Every relationship, Father. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you would give us relationship with the lost as well, Lord. Help us to genuinely love and care about the people in our world, Lord, that are far from you. Help us to be, Lord, lights that shine, beacon of hope, Lord. Come and heal our friendships, our relationships with the lost. Oh, thank you, Lord. We give you this time now as we go into your word. We ask you to speak to us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, the time just kind of went somewhere, didn't it? How many appreciate the, the presence of God, the power of God? We're not here to be cute today. We, we want to see God break through in your life. We want to see some things change and shift. So we're going to share. We'll get as far as we can. Thank you, Pastor Nicole. I think for the moment we're, we're done with our prayer time, but... We'll pray again. We'll bring our offerings to the Lord. Uh, at the end of the message, uh, we'll have Holy Spirit time, and uh, we'll just see where this goes. Thank you for letting us pray for you and talk to you out of our hearts just about what we see ahead. And this topic today, um, this we're, if you're new, we're kind of in a six-week-long conversation about relationships. We've talked about 
everything uh, that we can find about relationships that we believe will help people. And today, we're going to share some things on the five languages of love that I believe are a, can be a key to breakthrough. Um, I, I have seen this material and, and its power in my life for about three decades. This is not a new teaching. This is not our teaching. Uh, if you've heard this teaching before, just be refreshed and renewed in it because it'll help you. Uh, but if you've never heard this before, write this down and learn this because this is, this is something that I think will bring tremendous breakthrough, especially in a difficult relationship, one that isn't working. We're going to talk to you today about language of love and love itself. Right. So we've been talking. The first thing that we've talked about every week is what is love? Mm -hmm. So we've, we've learned that it's not a feeling of infatuation or really, I mean, it can be a feeling, but it's more about an action, the right kinds of action and the way that we behave towards each other, the way that we talk to each other um, is love. Yeah, it's a behavior. Right, so one of the best definitions that we've found is this one right here, and it says, love is the accurate estimation and the adequate supply of another person's need. And that, for me, what helps explain that for me is that I find out how you need to be loved and then I supply it in the way that you need to be loved. Right? Yeah, the word accurate is important. Everybody say accurate. Accurate. Uh, love is the accurate estimation and adequate supply. So when we're, like we're shooting a bow and arrow or shooting a gun at a at a rifle at a target, we want to make sure we have the right target. We want to have the right target in view, and we want to get to the right place on the target. A lot of people will say, well, now I just love the way I love, and you can take it or leave it. This is how I love. This is how I do it. But really, how's that working for you, to coin Dr. Phil's uh, phrase, right? How's that working for you? Actually, love is something different. Love gets to the target. Love is the accurate estimation of what another person needs and then an adequate supply of that very thing. So you can see love is not an easy thing. Love is a skill. It takes work. It takes time and it takes investment. And we have to focus and be more accurate in the way that we're loving each other. And I think that love language actually helps us with this issue of accuracy, right. loving people us, accurately. Right. I have to live for the benefit of others, not just for myself. I have to live for the benefit of you and all the people that God has surrounded us with. I have to find out, how does Pastor John, how does Pastor Cindy need to be loved? And then I need to try to supply that for those people. And Jesus, as we know, is yeah. our greatest example of that right. because he did that for us when he came here to earth when he died on the cross for us, and then he was resurrected. He was our biz biggest example of filling that need that we had as a sinful people. He filled our need. He came and he showed us by his actions. Yeah, and it, and it, was, the ac it was exactly what we needed. We needed forgiveness, and that's what he brought to us. Think of it this way. If it's a really hot day, and someone is super, super thirsty, and it's just so hot outside, and you just come and say, all right, look, I love you, so I'm going to give you my sweater. <laughs> this, is, this is my act of love for you. It, 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 it's just, I just want to show you that, because this is how I do it. I give I people sweaters. I appreciate the sweater, but I'm hot, and I don't need I'm it. I'm already <laughs> hot. I don't need a sweater. What I need is a glass of water, right? So this is the whole idea of love languages, which helps us target the way we're loving to a person's actual specific needs. So let's get into it. Love is expressed in many different languages. Paul the Apostle said this. There are many kinds of languages, and every single one of them is important. They are significant because language is how we communicate. And, you know, love is a language, and there are languages of love that we're going to learn. This is not our own material, but this comes from a book by the name, uh, by, by the author, Dr. Gary Chapman, who wrote in his book, The Five Love Languages, where he identifies five languages that people speak, different ways of expressing their 
communicating their love in five different languages. And we'll, we'll, we'll walk through these one at a time with you. But here they are. It's quality time, words of affirmation, giving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Those are the ones that we want to be able to share with you. And today, hopefully, if you don't know what your love language is, you'll figure it out. And if you don't know what your spouse or friend's love language is, hopefully, God will give you some insight today that will help you. Right. The most important thing that we can do to express love in ways that others understand is to express it in the way that they understand. Right. Um, It is like going into a foreign country. It's like going into a different culture, and I had to go into the culture of man speak (laughs) when we got married. He has to come over into my culture, and he has to find out, uh, can you tell me the directions to get to the baño, you know, to the restroom? (laughs) Speak your language. So, yes, I needed to get directions on how to love you and love you. So, uh, one daughter that we know said to her dad, how come you never tell me that you love me? And the father was totally shocked. He said, what are you talking about? I, you know that I love you. I show you that I love you by the way that I always hug you and hold you and cuddle you. But why didn't the daughter feel his love? It was because she didn't speak uh, physical touch. She spoke words of affirmation. Yeah, she said, and Dad, you never say it to me. Right. She said, I want to hear that you love me. I appreciate that you're hugging me, but I need words, and then I'll really feel loved. Right. So big communication or miscommunication takes place when we have big opportunities to share love, and we want to speak love accurately. One of Kathy's uh, love, although I think she speaks all five of them, she enjoys all five of them, but one of her primary ones is touch. So I try to make a habit of whether we're teaching the word or driving down the road or maybe watching a movie, I'll reach over, touch, hug, and just kind of stay connected to her uh, physically because that's a way that uh, I can communicate. Then if, and there are times, honestly, where I get into a little bit of trouble, I do something I shouldn't do, and or maybe there's a little tension on our relationship. Thank you, Pastor John. I think that'll help uh, Pastor Kathy. Sometimes... uh, you know, you get into those hard moments, and a love language, if you get that right, can be just the trick. For example, if I'm really in trouble, I might reach over and just do a little, do a little, uh, you know, a little knot work on her, you know, just find something out, and I can just feel her kind of soften, and then... All sins are forgiven. Boom. <laughs> you know, I'm talking the right language, and it's all smoothed over, right? Right, and one of your love languages is acts of service. Mm -hmm. So he feels loved if I bring him a cup of coffee or do an errand for him. And sometimes if I need to, if I have a plan to spend some money on a big ticket item, (laughs) I just do a couple of extra chores around the house and and boom, the bank is open. Bank is open. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so getting to know somebody and their love language comes with time. But you can actually ask them and find out, well, how, how do you feel loved? Which yeah. one of these five really floats your boat? And so that's your homework for today. And we have a little tool that you can go to info at... Email G- us. Email right. us, right. info at gccsj.com. And you can get this really cool tool, and we will mail it to you. And it's Discovering Your Love Language. It's a really short little question and answer. Right. You can find out your own love language and you can find out your kids love language, people that you work with. You know, you just have them fill out this little tool and you'll find your top two languages of love. All right. You get that by emailing info at gccsj.com. We'll send that to you uh, right away. And, and, and again, you know, if you're trying to find your love language, you just think through this material, maybe do that survey. And if you're trying to find someone else's love language, ask them. How would you, what would make you feel really loved? What would make you feel really special? And that can be, uh, you know, super helpful. Now, if you're listening to this in a small group, you're, you're there in your living room, you're, you're watching your small group, uh, you can go through your study guide and begin your discussion right now. Have a great group while Gateway continues on with the message. Enjoy your teaching time. All right, right here in the auditorium, let's unpack these five love languages. Are you ready? How many here think you already know what your love language is? Wrong. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just show me hands again. Show me hands. Don't be afraid. 
All right, how many have never heard of this area of love language? This is new to you. Let me see your hand. Don't be ashamed. All right, good. Some of you are here. So a lot of us are refreshing on this. Let's get into this. Love language number one is quality time. When we clear our calendar, when we cancel an appointment, uh, when we turn off the TV, and we do those things in order to spend quality time with a loved one, that is a powerful communication. You are speaking a language right there, especially if your friend or your spouse or whoever, especially if that person is somebody that speaks Uh, quality time as their primary love language. You know, the Lord speaks quality time. And quality time is a big key in relationships. We really can't succeed in relationships without quality time. And God knows this. In fact, when Jesus called the disciples together and he called them to follow him, he actually called them, Mark records, that he called them to be with him. So we say this way, withness is more important than witness. Because if we're not with the Lord, we have really nothing to share with other people in our lives. So we are with him. We, have, we experience witness before we can become effective as a witness and, uh, and really share the Lord. This is what Jesus established right away in his key relationships, his primary relationships of discipleship with those he was ministering to was time together. And there really is no way around uh, that. So if, if time together is your primary language, uh, discover that. And if you're trying to connect to somebody whose primary language is that, find that out about them, right? Right. The next one is words of affirmation. So some of you might be this, have this love language, and you prefer to be loved through words of appreciation mm-hmm. and encouragement. Insults and criticisms can be really hurtful, I mean, to most people, but with people that have this love language, this can be especially hurtful because right. that's how you fill their love tank is with words of appreciation and admiration and respect. And as I was sharing earlier, I didn't know how to do this. I didn't know how to speak words of admiration. It was in my heart to, and I wanted to be respectful. It's just that I didn't grow up. Nobody taught me how to do that. And so this might seem like a stretch. Well, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do these languages of love. The point is, is that Jesus said, if we call to him, he will answer That's us. That's right. Then He'll he will help us. Help us. Right. He will give us the ability to do things that we don't know how to do. So in Proverbs 18, 21, it says, the tongue has the power of life and wow. death. Wow. And those who love it will eat its fruit. We know that I, I like to have words of appreciation and I like to give words of life to people. I like to speak words of life to people because I like to see that smile on their face. I like to see a person feel loved through my words of appreciation. And I like, there's power in the words that we say to each other. And we can really, really build somebody up and make them feel loved by how we speak to them. You know, I was remembering, Kathy, uh, your dad, you know, he's, he's in heaven now. He's been there for some time. Uh, your relationship with your dad was not, there was not a lot of words uh, back and forth. I love you was super, super rare. Right. I mean, did he ever even say I love you? No, I would say it to him because after I got saved, again, I thought, I'm not going to wait till he initiates it. I'm going to do it. But you were kind of hungry to hear those words. I was words. hungry to hear those words. And sadly, you probably never heard them. Right. But you started to express... Uh, in writing too, you would write notes and letters. So some people say, well, I'm no good with my words, but you can do amazing things with a a note or a card. Kathy would do, because they didn't have that kind of close verbal relationship. And he was never taught how to do that, so he didn't know. He would just get awkward when you would say something. What he would do is go to work and make money and provide food and provide a house, and that's how he showed his love. So if she would say, Dad, you know, and lavish him with words, he would actually get awkward and uncomfortable. uncomfortable. So she started writing notes to him and her mom before she passed away and went to heaven said, you know, those notes, your father really loves reading those notes. He really loves those words. So she got the message over to him and it created a closeness and a, and a bond. Brothers and sisters, we've got to get good at this. We got to get serious 
about the life and death power of words. That, that we can speak life into a relationship with words. And conversely, we have to be very, very careful about negative words because words of criticism, harsh words, angry words are so destructive. You can, you can destroy your male son by just saying, be a man, you know. And, and that is just like a, I mean, the words itself, be a man, are not so, but it's like, how many understand what I'm talking about? That's like, you can just shred a person with, uh, with words. And I wonder, I wonder how many of the relationship problems we have are as a result of wrong words. And if we'll just cut off the, the negative words in our relationship, even words that we speak when the other person isn't present, because I'll tell you, I believe there's a spiritual dynamic to this verse that if you're speaking against someone behind their back and then putting on a face, you know, like, oh, I don't know why you're not my friend. But, but you've, you've released something. You know, you've released something uh, spiritual that is, is very powerful and, and exposing someone's weaknesses and saying, 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 words, words, words. The enemy grabs hold of those words and he uses them to generate strongholds. And to create strife, and then later you go, I don't even know what's, what's wrong with my relationship with Bob. We just don't get along. And, but all those words have been spoken, and the enemy is using every one of those, those words. I, uh, I could go on and on about this, but I, I want to uh, draw your attention to the book of Mark where God the Father spoke words of life over Jesus at his baptism. And don't think that Jesus didn't need to hear those words of affirmation. He did. They were powerful ways of, even the Son of God needed to hear words of blessing. And the Father spoke those words powerfully over Jesus. And I challenge the first service and I challenge you. I challenge you to be a voice from heaven to your loved ones. Because you can be. You can speak words of life. You can literally speak words of life. I challenge you to be a voice from heaven to your loved ones and take... uh, your teenage daughter, your friend at work or whatever, and especially if that's their love language, speak words. When you say, I'm proud of you, way to go, good job, you have what it takes. I mean, I see God's hand on you. I was so blessed by your song. I was so blessed to see that report card. And Don't let the negative people get you down. You've got everything it takes. We start building each other up that way. And boy, it releases uh, life into our relationships. Okay, we got to get to the third one because we're running out of time. Okay, I like this one too. I like all of them. But this is a nice one, giving gifts. So we know that in every culture of the world, this is a language that we all speak, that giving gifts is really a high mark of showing others that you love them Mm -hmm. and a high mark of affection. Uh, We have a staff person here. She is a gift giver. Oh, she man. just loves to give gifts. It's kind of embarrassing because she'll think of every reason to give a gift. She'll give a gift on Groundhog's Day just because it's a holiday. And um, you, you might see her walking around with a gift bag here because she's giving somebody a gift. Jesus taught us to be generous, right? He right. taught us to be givers. And generosity is the most forgotten key in a lot of our relationships. It is really a key element to, and it's not just about giving gifts, but it's about giving our time and giving our effort and just being a generous person all around. If you're not generous toward other people with your time, with your words, uh, with, with it, if you're not generous, I promise you, you're not doing well in relationships. You say, I don't know why people don't love me. I don't know why they don't, aren't, they don't want to spend time with me. Let's ask ourselves a hard question. Are we good at relationships? Are we good at being generous toward another person in their need and in their, in their style and so forth? That, that is a powerful key, honey. It's forgotten. Well, let's read this next scripture, Luke 6, 38. It says, if you give, you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full measure pressed down, shaken together, to make room for more and running over. Whatever measure you use in giving, large or small, it will be used to measure what is given back to you. So to certain people, this is like, if you give them a gift, they feel so loved. Their love tank just gets full by just a little gift. 
Even a, an envelope full of cash. That's maybe, maybe that's a sixth love language, cold, hard cash. That's a, cold. You guys can add that in your notes if you want to. I want to linger on that point yeah. for a moment. <laughs> yeah. So your gifts are actually bringing self-worth yeah, to a person. that's true. That's how they feel loved. I, I heard about a, a man who I've admired and loved for years because of his books. Uh, Defer, Deverne Fromke uh, wrote a great book called The Ultimate Intention. And, and he was at the end of his life, and <clears throat> he was in a gathering with a bunch of young ministers and, and others that were younger than him, and he was reflecting on his life. And somebody asked him, you know, Brother Deverne, do you, what, when you look back on your life, do you have any regrets? Do you have any things you wish you could do differently that, uh, that you could share for our benefit? And he said, absolutely. He said, there's one thing I wish I would have done differently. He said, I wish I would have wasted more money on my wife. And when I heard that story, I thought, that is a powerful... Yes, I see Pastor Joy patting Pastor Greg on the, on the shoulder here. By the way... You know, it's bad manners when, when we teach you on love and then you take our teaching outline and go beat up your kids or your wife with it. Please don't do that. That's not, that's not why we're sharing with you how to love, all right? Uh, we, need to, we need to look at ourselves. But I mean, I mean, we all get that in marriage. You know, it's like, I really hope my wife is listening to this part right here. And maybe some of you are underlining the outline for you. But no, serious, think about it. Do, do, do you... Do you really show enough generosity toward the people that are important to you? I know it might sound wasteful, but I promise you, nothing is wasted when you, when you do it out of love, you're building a relationship, right? Okay, let's get to the fourth one. This fourth language, uh, some of you in this room, this is where you are at right now. This is where it is for you. It is all about acts of service. These are the people that say, don't tell me you love me, show me. Right? It's all about the actions. And, uh, and this is a big, big language. And it's a, you know, it's a hard language to learn to speak. It's an expensive language. By the way, if your child or your spouse, if this is their love language, you're, you're going to have to be generous. You're going to have to interrupt your life. You know, it's like uh, Pastor, Chip said to, <laughs> Pastor Chip said to me, he was talking about somebody in his life, and I won't say, well, I don't know how I, I I'm going to dig myself out of a hole here. Well, Pastor Chip and Pastor Mina, please forgive me. But Pastor Chip's love language is physical touch. And Pastor Mina's love language is acts of service. So he complains to her and he says, man, you know, to make you happy, I have to do all kinds of chores around the house. If you just pat me on the bottom, we're good for like a week, you know. So, you know, so that's the point, right? Is Sorry, this one Pastor is a little Chip. tougher to speak, right? Um, if you're with someone that you love, just pat up. No, 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 don't do that. Um, so, but, but actually, this is, this language is taught in the Bible. God teaches us to speak this language. It says in 1 John 3, let us stop just saying we love each other and let's really show it by our, what? Actions. Actions. Remember, love is a behavior. It's not a warm, fuzzy feeling. It's how we act. It's what we do for one another. And so acts of service is a big part of this. So cleaning the garage, fixing something that's broken, uh, making a meal for somebody, folding laundry. Uh, these are ways of expressing. And Jesus himself speaks this language, by the way. Aren't you glad he didn't just wave from heaven and say, love ya? <laughs> right? He came down and he died on a cross in the ultimate sacrificial act he was showing his love for us as sinners, right? We weren't even interested in him, and he did that for us. That's why I think if you're here and you're, you haven't become a follower of Jesus, you should become a follower of Jesus because he loves you so much. He's the only person that's ever laid his life down for you. And from this point on, if you are a follower of Jesus and he asks you to do something, if he says you should tithe or you should witness or you should worship, lift your hands, or you should join the ministry or what, whatever the Lord would prompt you to do, he has absolutely the right to ask you to do that. He absolutely has the right to ask you for anything because he has already proven to you how much he loves you. Don't you love the Lord today? Yes. 
And aren't you glad he speaks acts of service? Okay, last one. Okay, I just wanted to give you some kudos here this morning. Oh. I hope we have time. Speak into the mic. <laughs> um, <laughs> yesterday, we were, we'd go to our swim class together on Saturday morning, and then we had some free time, so we thought, you know, what do we want to do today? And he said, well, why don't we take something over to Pastor Gary and Carol, because as you know, Pastor Gary ha had surgery. So I said, well, we have some leftover spaghetti sauce in the refrigerator, delicious. in the freezer yeah, that we made. And he said, why don't we make some lasagna? I said, that sounds great. So I went and did a couple of errands and you went and got things for the lasagna. And then we came home and you made the lasagna. And I said, because, well, because I'm a helpful person, but also because <laughs> his language of love is acts of service and I wanted to win some points. So I said, do you need any help from me? And he said, no. So, and you really didn't, you, you, were, you got it. And so I went and sat down and looked at Facebook and played Words with Friends. And so then when he was done, I said, wow, that made me tired watching you make all that lasagna. <laughs> but that was really awesome that you really put your love language into action it's, and you did a kind thing but for you did too. someone else. You did too. If you guys follow me on Facebook, you know that about three days ago, I got like a, I started jonesing for pie all of a sudden. I don't know what I, whether I saw it on TV or whatever, but I like needed pie. And I said, I want some pie. And I even posted on Facebook, is pie delivery a thing? Because I just felt like wanted somebody to, I said, I, it, whatever it would cost, just bring me a pie. Like I want a piece of pie. And so she said, what are you doing? And I said, I, she saw the message I put on Facebook. I was kind of half joking around. And so she ended up driving to Marie Callender's yeah. I don't know how to make pecan pie. Maybe you can teach me, Lameka, but anyway. But let me tell you, I ate pie that night, and we were close. <laughs> and, and that was an act of service that led to the fifth language, which is... <laughs> which is physical touch. Physical touch. Yeah. So this language is seen by many people as the main way that they receive love. If you give somebody a hug, or you pat their hand, or you give them a kiss, or you pat them on the cheek, <laughs> this is a powerful... Or other places. Uh-oh. Uh, let me get back to this. <laughs> Let's go to Jesus, shall we? <laughs> um, <laughs> Jesus was a toucher. And so there's lots of scriptures about Jesus uh, and physical touch. In Matthew 8, 2 and 3, a man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. He said, I'm willing, mm -hmm. be clean. And immediately the man was cleansed That's and powerful. cured of his leprosy. Mm -hmm. This is such an amazing story because as we know, leprosy is contagious and so if you touch somebody that has leprosy you're gonna get it and Jesus could have said from afar be healed and just waved his hand but he actually went to this man and he and he touched him so that is so powerful maybe that guy hadn't been touched in right in years and he was so hungry for that a welcome touch you want to talk about a welcome touch well uh, we say a welcome touch because a welcome touch, we'll put this on the screen, a welcome touch is a cleansing, healing force in a relationship. You know, a, a touch can be very healing, but it's, of course it's got to be welcome. Not everybody wants me to touch them, right? And that's not appropriate in every relationship for touching. It's got to be a welcome touch. But the point is that it can become a powerful uh, healing force in our relationship. Um, we got a few barbers in our church, and... Uh, I heard a story about a man who was coming to his barber twice a week uh, for a haircut. And finally, the barber, I mean, he was happy that, that he was getting business from the guy. But he finally said, you know, you don't really need a haircut twice a week. Why are you, why are you coming so often? True story. And the guy got very teary-eyed and felt a little embarrassed. But he said, you know, I just, I don't have anybody in my life that touches me. There's another story of uh, a young woman uh, that I read and she became sexually broken. She, she 
experienced uh, sexual confusion in her life. Later, she came to Christ and was beautifully healed and delivered. But as she described her childhood, her mother was not a toucher. And she, as a five-year-old, an eight-year-old, she was so hungry to be touched, and it just never, her mother just wasn't a toucher. She would lay, this little girl, she would lay in her bed, even on a cold winter night, and keep the blankets off. She was hoping that her mom, when she came to check on her, would see the blankets off of her and come in and touch her just in the slightest way, just maybe brush her hand over her body um, in, in bringing the blankets over her child. And, uh, and she was just like, like love starved. You know, and that's what led her into sexual brokenness later in life. I think it's very powerful for us, if we have a child or a loved one whose main language is touch, that if we are withholding touch from that person, uh, we're really starving them. And it, it, it's such a powerful thing for us to, for us to do in, our, in proper relationships, where it's proper, and to do a proper touch, a welcome touch. Um, it, it makes such a difference. Just out of curiosity, in this room, how many of you in this room uh, touch really is is a big language for you. Just just raise your hand. We won't we won't run up to you and you know touch you. You know, but, all right. That that's quite a few people. How many uh, how many relate to the power of affirming words? That's just like really important to you. What about um, acts of service? Don't tell me you love me. Show me. Show me some hands there. Okay, quite a few there. It's really interesting and. All these, how about gift givers and gift receivers? For you, it's all about the gift, all right? So, you know, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? And again, if you don't know, if you're, if you're building relationship, building intimacy with somebody, and you don't know what their love language is, just start to pay attention. God will show you, and they'll say certain things, even, an, even a complaint sometime. Like if somebody says to you, we never get time together. Well, if you're defensive, you'll say, well, yes, we do. You know, I was with you last Tuesday. But that, that's not really their main message. Their message is, I want more time. You know, I want more time. And, and so it can be a challenge to love other people, but how powerful it is when we choose to accurately. Love is the accurate estimation and adequate supply of another person's need. May the Lord grace us. Uh, with increasing love. Amen. We're going to worship the Lord here for a few minutes and give you a chance to bring your tithes and offerings. And I just want to say this in, in the closing moment of this message. Um, we're going to have prayer time here. I'd like to pray with you over your relationships as we already have, and especially your relationship with the Lord. I'd like to remind you of how gracious and beautiful our God is. Jesus told the story of the prodigal son. You may have heard that story. It was about a son who took his father's wealth and wasted it on sinful living. And the story ends this way. As the, as the young son decided to change his life and come back into relationship with the father, the story ends this way. The father looked off in the distance and saw the, the young man returning. And he felt what? What did he feel, ladies and gentlemen? felt compassion. He didn't say, you're such a, you're such a mess up. You're such a disaster. How could you waste all my money? God didn't throw it in his face. He was filled instead with compassion for his son and he ran out to him and enfolded him in an embrace and kissed him. I think somehow in that story, and you end up seeing the gift that he gave his son, he gave him a ring and he put a coat on him and he threw a party for him and he spent time with him. You see all those languages of love in the father. Here's the point. You and I have messed up big time for sure. I mean, we have, we've sinned, we've walked away from God's clear plan for our, for our lives. We know what he wants and a lot of times we just refuse. We don't follow the Lord. But God is full of compassion. And he's slow to anger. He's rich in mercy and he's gracious toward us. And when we come to him and we say, Lord, I've made a mistake. I've blown it. I need to come back to my relationship with you. 
He throws his arms around us and he enfolds us in his love. Let me pray for you. Would you just bow your heads right now? Father, I pray for all of our relationships and I pray for people in this room right now, Lord, who are far from you. I pray, Lord Jesus, that there would be a great reunion, a great reunion between God the Father and anyone here, anyone listening to my voice who has drifted away. Lord, I pray for a healing of all of our relationships, but especially of that first and most important relationship, our relationship with you as our creator, as our father, and as our God. Just while your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, I must ask you, because you've heard about God's great love and Christ's love on the cross, I'm asking you if it's your desire to respond to that love today. I'd like to pray for you if you're away from God and you don't want to be, if you're maybe a prodigal and and you'd like to return and be restored in your relationship with God. Maybe at one time you were serving God, but something happened and you've drifted away and now you're far from him. Or maybe you've never known the Lord. If that's you, if you're away from God today and you want to know that you're right in your relationship to him, I'd like to pray for you. So just while your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, would you just lift your hand and get my attention? Just say, Pastor, that's me. Just lift your hand and say, Pastor David, that's me. I'm away from God. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? God bless you. I see you in the back. Just just a moment longer. If you need, yes, I see you. That's good. I appreciate that. So we're going to pray together, and I'm, I'm going to just ask if everyone would just look at me, especially those of you that raised your hand going to say a prayer and I'm going to lead you in a prayer and I believe this will be the beginning point for a brand new season in your life. Do we have that prayer? We can put it up on the screen. Uh, Do we have a prayer today? Yeah. It's coming. All right. Everyone here listening to me, if you're in the cafe, if you're in the auditorium, let's say this prayer together before we worship the Lord, okay? Can we all say it together, especially those that raise their hands? Let's say it together. Father God, thank you for loving me and sending Jesus to touch my life. I accept your love and I praise you for the peace it brings to my heart. From now on, I want to live a life of love. Teach me the joy of loving accurately and use me to bring healing to those in need. In Christ's name. Now say this, Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. Make me a brand new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want us to give a big hand to those that prayed that prayer for the very first time. Come on, we celebrate that. That is awesome. There's a little card in the seat pocket in front of you that says, I've decided. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, Take a moment right now, fill that card out. We love to hear about people that are making a decision to become followers of Jesus. The ushers are coming now to serve you and if you'll place that card and your gift in the offering as it comes by, let's worship the Lord. Kathy, come on and Pastor Nicole, let's sing together, hallelujah. Sing it together. Nothing can tear me away from your love. Say nothing can tear me away. Come on with your whole heart. Nothing can separate. Nothing can separate your heart from mine. Nothing can tear.
Let's stand and sing that. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, How we Jesus. love the Lord today. Oh, we love you. I love you. Yes, I love you. Because? Because you first loved me. just speak a blessing over us we've heard God's word and I want you just to say these words Father God fill me with the love that comes from above say it again Father God fill me with the love that comes from above Lord I bless your people with the blessing of the Holy Spirit that you will empower all of us to love the unlovely, to heal the broken with our words, with our kindness. Lord, and that, that power that comes from heaven, we weren't born with it. Let that grace and that power rest on us mightily, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. All right. If I could touch every one of you, I would, but you'll have to settle for my words of affirmation. I love you, and I'm so glad we could be together. Take a minute, love somebody, high-five somebody, fist bump them, whatever you do. Just greet one another, and if you're a musician looking to get connected to worship at Gateway, please join us in room 201. God bless you.